Hey guys, it's Hink here. Today we're going to be talking about manual stretches. And so uh, anybody who's familiar with me knows that I've made pretty impressive gains over an inch in length and over you know 0.8 inches in girth over the span of about 24 months. And so one thing I get asked about is manual stretches. How do I do them? How do I find success in them? And so that's what we're going to go through today. I'm going to take you through everything that you need to be successful. So stay tuned. All right, guys, so first things first, why do I do manual stretches? Well, one, that's the first thing that I came across. So when I was new to PE, um, I came across Derek's video, looked up the phallus on forte, that wasn't an option. And so then I started coming across different manual stretches routine and it kind of stuck at that point. I think they're easy, um, there's no equipment that's necessary. And for me, they've been very effective. I personally, I don't like devices and for a couple of different reasons. Number one, I try to keep this stuff low key. And so having another device show up at the door increases the risk that I get found out. I know, trivial reasons. Number two, I feel like your hands are more sensitive. And so if something is going wrong during manual stretches, you're going to find out pretty quickly because all of the sensations are, are a part of basically your body. So either you can feel pain in your hand or you can feel tenderness or a random sensation in there and you can stop immediately and let go. So that's another reason why I like it. But take it for example, like a vac blister. I see guys with vacuum hanging all the time. They get these gnarly blisters they don't even know are occurring because they are disconnected because it's a device. I like the fact that there's built-in fatigue. So your hands, no matter how strong your hands are, you're going to fatigue at some point. And when you have this fatigue, it allows for you to basically let go of your grip, relax your hand, and allow reoxygenation of the tissue with healthy blood flow. This also comes into when you think about intervals, okay? And so like BD has been posting a lot of stuff on intervals and how it might be more helpful to apply tension, relax, apply tension, rather than just apply prolonged tension. And I actually agree with that. And I think that's part of the reason why I've been successful is because I'll stretch for a while, relax, and then stretch the tissue again. And it allows for more potential for growth according to some theories, okay? Another time is I don't have time for extenders. Full disclosure, I've never used an extender or like a hanger or a vac hanger, but just the time that it takes to like get strapped in and then to like tape up your glands, for example, if you need to, that's time that I would much rather spend just actually manual stretching. I don't have a lot of time. I have like, you know, 20, 30 minutes in the morning to try to get this done. And so I want to be as efficient with my time as possible. This is a stupid thing, but it actually burns calories. So using your hands, you know, to form grip, to use that strength, it's going to burn some calories. And so I'm always trying to be in a calorie deficit, you know, lose a little bit of weight but you know it's trivial but it's there okay Another thing is if you need to like leave in a jiffy. So, you know, if I was in the basement doing this and my, I heard my girl walking downstairs, all I'd have to do is stop and then pull up my pants and I'm good to go. Versus if you're strapped into a device, you got to undo the tape and you got to unfasten all this stuff and then like put the device away. It leads to, you know, much more challenging situations. I like it because you can control how hard or how soft you press. And so, yeah, you can do this with devices as well, but you can still gradually increase your tension over time based on just how hard you're pulling. And the most important thing is that it's worked for me. I say this all the time, guys, you have to find something that works in your routine. And so it's something that you can do it, you can do it easily, and it fits into your lifestyle so you can be consistent with it. That's the key to growth. So where do I think devices are better? Well, number one, if it fits better into your lifestyle, and number two, you can have like measurable tension. And so you know if you were using a hanger, for example, and you were hanging with 1.5 pounds, you know there's basically 1.5 pounds of tension on your dick. And so that is important, and there is some safety benefits potentially with that. But once again, it's about what fits into your lifestyle. Some people like devices because it's basically like set it and forget it. Tape up, get strapped in, put that tension on and you go on about your day. You know, both your hands are free. You can do whatever you want. It's just not for me guys, but figure out what works best for you. And so I would like to give some credit where credit is due. When I first started, there was actually two articles. The first article I came across was actually a Healthline article, um, which I'm gonna do a video on if I haven't released it yet already, but I'll put a screenshot up here and a link below if you wanna check that out. But it talked about, it was actually like a health line, which is a reputable medical resource talking about different penile stretching techniques and how to be successful. So I started there. And then also I came across Good Looking Loser through his basically bathmate videos on YouTube. And from there, he has a pretty extensive stretching routine with resources there and videos. Very helpful. So big shouts out to those two resources there. BD has some great video resources on the subreddit r slash getting bigger. So check that out um, if you like that as well. But I definitely suggest that, you know, after this video, 
preferably you go and check out those sources. All right guys, so let's get into it. So what is my routine? I'm not gonna lie to you guys. First thing I do is I take a scoop of this about 30 minutes before my workout. This is Vigor, this is the pre-workout that I made with BD, particularly because of its nitric oxide boosting benefits. And that's not only through citrulline, it's through a more bioavailable form of arginase or arginine, and it also has different ingredients that actually increase your nitric oxide synthase, which allow you to produce more nitric oxide pound for pound, one scoop of Vigor is significantly more effective than just taking citrulline, guys. It's just a fact of the matter. If you haven't seen my video on it, check it out if you wanna learn more. But blood flow is so important anytime you're doing any of these stretching techniques. Now, uh, I'm gonna stand up and you know try to demonstrate this in a relatively you know PG way, okay? So, let's say that, so this is my flaccid pee, pee okay? So the tape indicates where my glands is, and then obviously the rest indicates the shaft the back connecting to the base, okay? So first thing I do after I've taken my pre-workout is I actually just kind of, you know, just, I don't, I'm not masturbating, but just kind of stimulating it a little bit to get the blood flow in that area, okay? And then once I'm ready to start stretching, I can see that it's not like a chub, but it's maybe just below a chub. I know that there's blood flow in there, I'm ready to go, okay? Some people use heat before, that's fine too. That's not what I use, okay? And so first thing I do is I basically grab right below the glands of the penis, okay? So glands is here, okay? I grab about right here, okay? And I grab with my wrist facing out away from my body and I make a circle with my finger and my hand like this. I apply just enough tension on that area so I have a grip, but not enough tension where I'm at risk of pulling something or hurting something. So I have my tension like this, and with my warm-up set, I just pull straight down like this, okay? Hold it for about 10 seconds, and then I pull to the side. This should be at almost like a 90 degree angle here, and so it really looked more like this just without my thumb and then I pull switch hands and then I pull on the other side and that's for once again about 10 seconds each way and I might repeat that okay 10 seconds straight down 10 seconds to the side and then 10 seconds to the other side there that's kind of my warm-up I gradually increase tension what comes in next is my handy dandy chair right here I like to use what's called a Captain Morgan stretch. And so what I mean by that is I literally put my leg up on here. Why I think this is helpful is because I don't have to use muscular strength to pull straight down. I can actually put my leg up and use the weight of gravity leaning forward to pull and stretch, okay? Once I have done my warm up, so then I basically, I put one hand at my base using the inverse. And so my fingers are basically like this. This is on the end pulling out. This is a ring that's at the base pulling back. And so first thing I do is I put a hand at the base and then I stretch straight down. Once again, not at the glands, but just below the glands or just, yeah, just below the glands. Okay. Right about here. Pull and I stretch down, okay? And I forgot to mention, I actually have a stopwatch on my phone. And so the first thing I do is I basically start my stopwatch or I adjust my watch so I can see exactly how long I've been stretching. So once that watch starts, I pull one at the base, pulling kind of back, one at the end, pulling straight down, and I just pull and I hold for as long as I can, okay? I'm not gonna demonstrate that for time's sake, but I pull and hold, okay? Once either my hand, you basically my hand gets fatigued, then sometimes I'll just do one hand and I'll just pull straight down and I'll hold. And then what I do is I actually reach behind my leg right here and I will actually pull and hold straight down like this. That way my chest is actually resting on my leg and I'm using the weight of gravity to pull straight down. Then sometimes I will actually put that other hand up there at the base to pull straight down like this. And so this is kind of applying slight tension back. This is applying tension down. So all of the tension is actually in my penis. It's not on my ligament. It's not on my neurovascular bundle. It's the tension is isolated to just the penis. Then sometimes I will actually rope this back. Now guys, everybody's gonna be limited basically based on their size. In my case, I'm able to actually pull here and pull down and actually pull back and actually use my thigh here to apply pressure and almost like a slight fulcrum and I pull back like this under my leg. And so I hold it for as long as I can. Then once I get tired, I usually rest my off hand and I actually do like a between the cheeks like this where I pull straight back basically between my cheeks 
And so my other hand kind of looks like this, okay, with my leg up. I know that looks ridiculous, but and I'm pulling like that. And then I'll typically repeat that series of basically straight down, fulcrum here, and then between the cheeks for basically as long as I can until my hand gets tired. And I also do a certain technique where I actually use the palm of my hand and I put the base of my D like this and I actually pull down at an angle like this. So I'm holding my base here with this hand and I'm pulling down right here. And so my D is literally like coming out and coming then coming down as an additional source of kind of like a fulcrum stretch. But the, the, my base is like all the way here in my hand and then I'm pulling down like this, okay? People are gonna be limited by their size, okay? So then what I do, we switch legs and do the same thing. Pull straight down here, okay, for as long as I can. I'll put my other hand up here at the base to make sure that the tension is just in this tissue here. Pulling straight down. Once again, this grip is just hard enough so it doesn't slip. It's not hard enough where it basically cuts off all my circulation. And every time I adjust grips, sometimes I like actually move this a little bit, move my D around, get the blood flowing a little bit, and then continue basically straight down here. Sometimes I'll do it with just one hand if this hand gets tired. Then the fulcrum up, kind of using my thigh to stretch right there. And then sometimes between the cheeks, okay? If you're more limited in size, guys, just focus on, you know, in my opinion, pulling straight down and then pulling back kind of behind the cheeks. But just try to do what you can, even if you're limited right here, you know, just you can still rest your hand against your thigh and pull kind of as much as you can. And so, yeah, I repeat that process. This, you know, sometimes I'll do this with, you know, both hands, one hand at the base. Then I'll use my palm right here and pull down over my palm and kind of pull it back to add some additional tension on the tissue. Fulcrum underneath the thigh, between the cheeks. I basically set my timer. I make sure I'm doing basically 15 minutes on each side and that's that's my stretching routine guys. That's it. Hey guys, working here. And so uh, one th big thing that I have to interject is basically how hard to pull. So when you're doing the warm ups, I think you should aim for about basically three quarters of the length of your maximum stretched flaccid length during the warm up phase. However, when you are moving to the active stretching phase, you want to basically maximize your full stretch flaccid length. You know, you could consider doing is actually basically getting a ruler, measuring your max stretch flaccid length and getting that like feeling of what is that max stretch, you know, what does that actually feel like? And then that max stretch feels like, you can implement that. I think the key is that you're gonna to try to you know, gradually progress that force, and so obviously you don't wanna to pull too hard where you damage anything, but you do wanna gradually increase the amount of force that you pull with. I think in general, a goal starting off with, and a relatively safe goal, would be to go for that maximum stretched flaccid length. Anyways, back to the programming. So what are some of the like nuances from this? First of all, like, I don't know if you can tell, like I'm not trying to flex or whatever. I'm kind of a big guy. I'm not the most muscular guy. I don't have like the, the biggest arms, but just from the sheer like size of my arms, like you can tell, you know, I'm a, I'm a tall guy. So when I'm pulling down, I'm actually exerting quite a bit of force on there based on the weight of my arms. If your arms don't weigh that much or it's hard for you to actually feel that tension, you can do something that's called like a shopping bag hanger where you get a shopping bag, you fill it up with something with something heavy, then you put that on your arm and so this exerts additional force down. So you're standing up, you got your shopping bag on and then you're pulling down and then the weight of this actually pulls the tissue down as well, okay? Um, I think that's part of the reason I've been successful is because I have an adequate stimulus because I have a heavy arm and on top of that, you know, I have a decently strong arm so I do add additional force with like a downward pressure once my tissue is warmed up. As I mentioned, sometimes I use like different angles or almost like a fulcrum meaning, you know, like it's bending over something to apply additional force. And like I showed you using either my thigh or even the flat of my hand to get some additional tension there. I personally, I like to use one hand at my base as much as I can. There's several reasons for this. Number one, you're preventing slash limiting things like turkey neck or skin migration because all of the tension is in your penis. So it's on the skin of the penis and it's on the tissue underlying the penis. So as the tissue enlarges, the tension is in 
the penis and the penis skin. And so both of those structures are gonna enlarge. It's not as much pulling the tissue down away from like your pubis and so your skin actually migrates down. So you limit the skin migration that way. You limit the base tinting and you also limit the potential for something like a turkey neck. That's why I think like extenders, for example, which you have pressure at the base and then pressure in the penis, you also, I think you're at less risk of something like, you know, turkey neck, etc. When you have pressure at the base, once again, you don't have as much tension on the ligament. You know, this is a hot take, super f hot take here, but I don't really believe that the ligament, the suspensory ligament of the penis is as involved in this process as people think. Why do I think that? Well, when you actually have penis enlargement surgery where you actually cut the, the suspensory ligament, you do not see erect gains. The only thing you gain is in flaccid length. And so if we're talking like PE, penis enlargement techniques causing flaccid gains, yes, absolutely the ligament could potentially be involved. But as far as erect gains, I don't think the ligament is involved. I know, dude, super hot take, you know, please correct me, you know, sound off on me on the, on the on, you know, at Hink, you know, but that's just my, my personal belief. I don't think it matters if you stretch out that tendon. And I think really that when you have that, um, or excuse me, I just said tendon, like, you know, Leo and longevity, rest his soul, but when you don't have that tension on the suspensory ligament, you don't have that dull ache and you can have uh, more time without breaks. When I do my stretches, some days I'll go like 14 days without taking a break. That's just what I do, I don't get sore. Part of that is from my recovery protocol, which I'll go over in a little bit, but anyways, I'm rambling. And so when you put the pressure at the base, you take some of the stress off that ligament in that area. Also important in that area is your neurovascular bundle, which is passing through there. You don't want too much pressure on that, you want the stretch to be in your penis. And when you have one hand at the base and then one hand stretching, the tension is between those two points in your actual penis, and that's what you want. It also decreases your risk of things like pelvic floor damage, for example, because the tension is in the penis, it's not being pulled like from the corpus spongiosum, which basically connects all the way at your butthole. And so I get guys that say, I did manual stretches or hanging, and now my taint is sore, why is that? Well, it's because the underside of your penis extends all the way to to your butthole and so you don't want tension on that area i do have uh, you know i do frequently use just my one hand stretches you know that's because it does take a toll on my hand strength to hold both guys starting off your hands are probably going to get fatigued if you don't do much manual stuff um, or you don't like lift weights for example um, but you do build up tolerance to that you can get one of those little squeeze balls or one of those little squeezy like wrench looking things to help build your strength if you need to and once again guys some of the stuff that i'm able to do or demonstrate here you know if you have a foreign inch flaccid penis, you know, you know, I'm not trying to be a dick here, but you're like, you're not going to be able to pull it up on the underside of your, of your thigh. It's just not possible, but you can do the best you can and modify what I'm saying to meet your needs. Okay. So how often do I do this? Well, when I'm like active in PE mode, which I'm not really right now, I try to get at least 30 minutes in in the morning and then at least somewhere between 10 to 20 minutes in the evening basically before bed. Guys, I do a modified version of this where I basically do the same stretches just lying down in the bed. I do these when my significant other is sometimes asleep beside me or even awake. She has no idea what I'm doing. And so you can do these stretches discreetly, which is another reason why I like these over devices. And so I can get a second set in at night before bed, which I frequently do if I'm very active into my like growth protocol, okay? I think the best thing you could do would be a total of 60 minutes of stretching, basically in two 30 minute sessions, ideally about like, I don't know, six or eight hours apart at least. In my case, it's more like, you know, 18 hours apart, but that's okay. If you start getting sore or tender, you know, just take a break, guys. Take a day off, take an evening off, whatever you need to do. Uh, you only get one dick, don't break it, okay? And another thing, guys, y'all have been asking me for this video for months and months. Please take a second to just put a thumbs up on this video if you've learned anything or in any way find this helpful or just finally happy to hear my routine. It goes a long way in helping the channel grow. Also, feel free to leave a comment of support. I really appreciate that as well. So what supplements do I use? Of course, <laughs> I use Vigor, guys. This is the mainstay of my protocols. And so I use a scoop of this in the morning and then usually a half scoop at night before bed, every day. Because of that, I've been able to cut down on my other supplement, which is Cialis. Instead of using like 2.5 every day to every other day, I take 2.5 milligrams of Cialis Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 
that's it. My erection quality is still as if I'm on like five milligrams of Cialis because I still have a little bit in my system. You think I'm lying guys, but whatever. But that vigor is like, it's very potent when it comes to erections. I'm telling you in blood flow, I take 2.5 milligrams of Cialis, vigor one to two scoops twice a day. And then I take of course the N-acetylcysteine guys. All of this is based on maximizing blood flow and then supplements like N-acetylcysteine. If you haven't seen my video on it, check it out guys. But it actually has what we call LOX inhibition or lysyl oxidase, which is basically an important component of the collagen structure of the penis. And so when you inhibit that, you are more prone to actual growth, which they've demonstrated in rat models where they have actually blocked your lysyl oxidase. You get a component of that. And you also get damage prevention with these different supplements. And so what I mean by that is damage to your endothelial structures, the actual tissue, the smooth muscle, when you're putting it through the trauma of stretching it, you get increased recovery with that. And so I think that supplement stack is very important. I think at the very, very least, you need to be on some sort of citrulline-based supplement one to two times a day, guys. I think that's very, very important. Even if it's not bigger, I don't care, but you need to be on that. And so what can go wrong with manual stretches. As Ben from Mailhanger likes to point out, you really don't know how much force you're pulling with. And there are guys who get injured because they say, oh, I'm going to do manual stretches, you know, grab their dick, yank down, dick breaks. And they're like, oh, shit, I have heart flaccid. What happened? And it's because number one, you didn't measure, you know, how much force you're pulling with. And number two, which is the most likely culprit and most common culprit that I see is guys just pull down too abruptly and too quickly. Your penis can't handle that abrupt change in tension and pressure and something's got to give, guys. So how do you minimize the risk? Start slow and start with short, small sets. Start with like 10 second sets, okay? 10 seconds in each direction, rest and do it for a total of maybe five minutes for the first week. Next week, move up to 10 minutes or like the first three days, five minutes. Second three days, like 10 minutes, you know, then gradually work your way up to 30 minute sessions as you tolerate. It's, it's like progressive overload, guys. And so gradually take your time and increase the time under tension, which is the key time under tension. This allows the tissues to be acclimated. You're gonna decrease your risk of permanent damage. You always have to do some sort of mild warm up. In a perfect world, you would basically do these stretches in like a warm Epsom salt bath because you have the benefits of the Epsom salt, which, you know, are kind of negligible, but mostly the benefits of having like the hot water stimulus to help loosen up the tissues, help to increase blood flow. So make sure you do a warm up. If you have access to like a heated room, like, you know, one of my clients is rich as and like has its own private sauna and does it. So you could do it in there as well. Never dynamic stretch. What I mean by that is the cursed side to side stretch where you basically take your dick and then you pull, you stretch down. And so you basically pull and then as you're stretching, you move it from side to side. I hate that stretch and I can't tell you how many guys have injured their dicks by doing that because you put tension on that neurovascular bundle through something specifically called the Alcox Canal, which you know, I've posted about it on Reddit, but it's basically a small little area where your neurovascular bundle passes through, which is particularly prone to trauma, especially repetitive trauma, as published in urology journals. So never apply tension and movement at the same time. You grab, get to the desired position, pull and stretch and keep a constant tension on it and then relax and then move to the positions. You never have movement and tension at the same time, in my opinion, okay? Never grab directly on the head of the penis, never. You always wanna grab the shaft of the penis just below the glands of the penis because number one, you can actually separate your glands from your actual corpus cavernosum. You know, there's actually literature supporting that in case reports, it's traumatic. But then you increase your risk of nerve damage when you grab directly on the very sensitive glands of the penis. So you never wanna do that. And then you can also do things like obstructing your urethra, things like that. And I can't stress this enough, guys, you need a blood flow supplement either ideally before, but you know, or certainly like after to increase your blood flow as your tissue is recovering. Very important. Citrulline based supplement. I'm gonna plug Vigor guys, F it, it's my supplement, but you know, it's very good. And so, uh, you know, there is a modified way to do this guys. And so if you are seated, I can do this. All right, so you're seated here. You can also just basically do the variations of what I was talking about just in the seated position here. If you wanna sit down and watch TV, you don't have to be standing. I personally think you get a better stretch with your leg up on the counter, but you can do basically everything I was talking about in just the seated position. All right, and so 
Uh, what do I do while I'm actually manual stretching? Well, usually I actually um, watch YouTube. Sometimes I'll go through Reddit comments. I've been doing a lot more two-handed stretches and so I don't have hands-free. Um, when I used to have like a hand-free, I would actually practice my Spanish. Porque me gusta español y quiero uh, aprender más. But, you know, something that's going to avoid sexual stimulus so you can not get hard during this. I don't understand guys that are like, oh, I can't stop getting hard during manual stretches. It's like, just do something that's going to take your mind off of it. I don't, I don't understand that. But anyways, one thing that I always recommend also is pumping after you stretch. Most importantly, it gets that blood flow immediately engorging the penis, getting that healthy blood flow, those recovery factors there. But also you have just stretched out your penis. Next thing you want to do is engorge that tissue so you can actually start building a bigger penis that way by stretching it and then filling it up. Uh, and so that's why I think I've been able to so successfully build both length and girth at the same time because basically my manual stretches are like a tunica building exercise. And even if you're only pumping at very low pressures, you can still have a significant and dramatic benefit as far as healthy blood flow recovering. So I think if you're going to stretch, you want to get either an air pump or a high quality water pump. If you're just going for health, just apply low enough pressure where you get an erection. If you're going for actual gains, you know, check out my video on, you know, pumping and part two, especially because that's where I think the most helpful tips are but I'm not going to go over that in this video. So in closing guys, I personally don't think manual stretches are rocket science. I don't understand why people make them so complicated. I don't know, but I think they're very easy. They're very practical and they're very effective and very efficient, especially when done correctly. So hopefully this allows you guys to learn some of my tips that, you know, I have found success with. I know this is a long video. Please leave a comment. Let me know what you think. Let me know if this was helpful. Let me know if you appreciate this. Certainly a thumbs up as well. Please feel free to subscribe. Helps the channel grow. If you need to reach me directly for any reason, you can go through my Patreon, guys. I don't respond to messages on Reddit. I don't respond to chats on Reddit. I turned it off. I do read the comments on here, guys, but if you need especially like coaching, but more importantly, like injury support, supplementation, etc., you can reach me there. Vigor is back in stock, guys. Um, we sold out on the last batch. We have a new batch. Um, check it out on leviathansubs.com or on Amazon. Still getting awesome reviews, guys. And we do have our product, Virility. It's coming soon, guys. I'm sorry about that. Appreciate you guys watching. Until the next one, peace and love.